throw the Romans. When they came to arrest him, he didn't even raise a sword. One of those with Jesus drew his sword, the gospel tells us, and struck off a man who came to arrest him, cutting off his ear. But Jesus said to his disciples, put your sword back in its place, for all who take up the sword will die by the sword. In the end, dragged before the authorities and falsely accused, Jesus of Nazareth didn't even raise his voice in protest. According to the Gospel of Matthew, the Roman governor said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations are being made against you? But Jesus did not answer, not even to a single charge, it says, so that the governor was greatly amazed. And then, as you know, Pilate ordered Jesus to be whipped and crucified. Well, it goes without saying. For those who long for a savior, a liberator, the anointed one, this was not it. This was not what they expected. It was only later, after whatever the experience of resurrection was for them, it was only later when his followers began to look back at his ministry and search the scriptures to understand what it all meant that they began to see something truly unexpected. In the scroll of Isaiah, they read, God has given me the tongue of a teacher. The Holy One has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting, but God helps me. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. And later in the same scroll, to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering, acquainted with grief. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, and by his bruises we are healed. Reading such things, they, they seem to recognize someone that they had been with. And they began to wonder, could it be? They also remembered his words, Blessed are the poor in spirit and those who moan, mourn. Blessed are the merciful and the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God, and the realm of God is theirs. They remembered, if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. Love even your enemies. And pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of God. They remembered the welcome and the forgiveness and the healing he offered them, and they began to believe again, despite themselves. Could it be that he was the anointed one, the unexpected one, who shows the way to a new and unexpected kind of life? Could it be? In many ways, we're not so different from those first century followers of Jesus. We may not be as oppressed or as poor. But we still wait for the one to the one. When we're lonely, we wait for the one. Kind, romantic, and gorgeous. <laughs> the perfect partner who will meet our needs perfectly. When we or a loved one face serious illness, we long for the one who might heal us or them. When the country is headed in the wrong direction, we look for the one leader who can make it all right. When society causes the earth itself to groan with environmental destruction, we hope for some kind of technological miracle. That one technology that will make it all better still allow us to maintain our wasteful lifestyles. <laughs> like those who went before us, we too wait for the long-expected anointed one to come, we pray, and save us. We'll wait till you come and save us. Then comes Jesus, riding a donkey. I mean, could you have had a little power, Jesus? <laughs> we see him coming on yet another spring day 
this spring day, making his dusty, weary way into our midst and into our lives once again, wielding no sword and no power to speak of, except, <coughs> except the power of God's love <coughs> made known in him, in his extravagant welcome, in his free-flowing forgiveness, and in his healing, a healing that goes far deeper than any disease of the body can penetrate, even death. Suddenly, like those who went before us, we begin to wonder, who is this? Could it be? Then we begin to wonder at him, in awe of the one who shows us the way to a new and unexpected kind of life, where God's love can be made real in our lives, as it was in his. Faith, William Sloan Coffin once said, is being grasped by the power of love. Faith is recognizing that what makes God is infinite mercy, not infinite control, not power, but love unending. Faith is realizing that if Jesus became like us, it was so that we might become like him. Let the same mind be in you, the Apostle Paul wrote to the followers of Jesus. Let the same mind be in you that was in him. Give up grasping after power and riches and whatever it is you think will save you. Be like him. Let the same mind and spirit and life and love be in you that was in Christ. Then you will become the unexpected one. You will become the one who comes bearing the gifts of God's love and welcome, healing and forgiveness 